I've never had an epidural administered to me, but I've seen them administered a few times. I've been in births of my wife, and whenever they come with that huge needle towards her spinal column, I get very, very nervous because I think, you know, a lot of things could probably go wrong with this. And it turns out, if I'm not mistaken, that unfortunately, a lot of times it does go wrong. So what is the problem that Omic Medical is solving? Yes, so uh, Omic Medical uh, uh, is developing a, a new innovative device uh, to provide safer and more accurate epidural injections. So epidural injections are widespread uh, uh, procedure intended to provide pain block or regional anesthesia, utilized a lot in uh, labor and delivery, like in the case of your wife, and also to provide a, a pain blocks uh, for patients who suffer from chronic back pain and a patient that they undergo a surgery. Now, the issue or the problem with epidurals is that, uh, well, start invented at the early 20th of uh, the previous century, is that epidurals are provided in a subjective technique. Uh, actually, the doctor is utilizing this type of needle and a syringe. He is providing pressure on the syringe while advancing the needle through the spinal ligaments and into the epidural space, a very small space that surrounds the spinal uh, uh, cord and he anticipated to feel a loss of resistance once the tip has entered the right place. Now, due to the nature of these techniques, up to 30% of all epidurals are initially misplaced, meaning that the, uh, uh, the patient won't receive his pain block. And in up to 5%, the doctor by mistake can puncture the dura, the tissue that protects the spinal canal, thus resulting in a devastating complications such as PDPH, postal dural puncture headaches, which kind of a migrant type uh, headache that requires the patient to uh, uh, lie down for a few days and uh, requires some extensive care, and also nerve injury that can uh, uh, leave the patient uh, most of the time transient, but can leave the patient paralyzed. I mean, 30% is a lot. It's, it's, uh, and 5% and, and, and of, of puncturing the, the spinal cord is terrible. What sticks out to me is you, you said this was created in, in the 1920s. Right. It's pretty much the same technology and since pretty then. much the same uh, technique. And I think with the modern standard and the ability or the accessibility of new technology to provide a, a new solution that uh, will aid or assist the doctor to, to provide a safer injection, that's the right time uh, to do that. So, so explain your solution to the problem. Yeah, so our solution, uh, uh, you can imagine our solution, kind of an extension to the doctor hands. We provide the electromechanical single-use element that is installed naturally between the same needle and the same syringe that the doctor is utilizing. Actually, it's used in conjunction with the standard technique. And this element, sensing element, measures the tissue resistance at the needle tip, while providing an additional signal that can support the physician to get the right decision that enters the right space. The most important part is to detect the right moment where the tip of the needle just enter this uh, very small uh, uh, space in order to alert him to stop the needle advancement and provide a safer injection to the patient. That's amazing. And so how many of these injections are applied every year? What, what does your market look like? So the epidural market is a huge market. There is an estimation of 40 million injections that are given annually for labor and delivery, chronic back pain, and also for uh, post-operative management and surgeries. The market is co constantly growing uh, due to the aging of the population and more clinical applications that are given with the federal. Uh, so it's a huge market with a huge potential. Many Western countries are utilizing uh, in, percent, in high percentage uh, the epidural blocks and it become more and more popular in developing countries as well. And one of the important factors of providing this type of device to, to this field, to this uh, market, is to provide something in a range of pricing that is suitable for this type of uh, procedure. We offer the device at a range of $20 to $25 and together combined with the kit for $30, which is in a very attractive uh, pricing for, for the doctor and for the hospitals. But it doesn't sound like it's a completely automated process. To what extent does the doctor still feel like he's in control of it? So this is a good question. One of the key factors that we find when we talk with the doctors is that they still want to feel when they're doing the procedure. It's very important. Uh, so uh, the ability to, to work in, con in conjunction with the standard practice, to use the same elements, uh, it's a very important factor that will ease the adoption of this type of technology with the market. We've seen this uh, when we conducted, a, we just recently conducted a, a clinical trial here in Israel in two leading hospitals, and we are amazed by how easy for the doctor to utilize the device and use it with minimum changing for the workflow. And that's an important factor. 
Amazing. So who, who are your main clientele? Is it hospitals you're selling to, medical clinic, doctors? Yeah, so in, in the beginning of first focus, uh, when we entered the, uh, the US market and after that, uh, several other uh, markets, is to focus in L&D, in labor and delivery. So in nature, the, the type of uh, customers at the hospitals uh, they sell. Uh, of course, that uh, in the end, this will become the standard of care and we're utilizing other uh, clinical applications, like in, uh, in pain clinics, then private uh, uh, clinics could also be our potential customer. Is your device patented? Yes, we have a portfolio of three different patents and nine patents are already granted in several countries. Of course, we focus on the US market, as well as European and the Chinese market as well. So we, we have thousands of business people from around the world who, who see these videos, who, who want to help uh, innovators, like Israeli innovators like you succeed. What do you need to succeed? What, what are you looking for right now? Okay, so actually Omic is entering into a round of financing in order to focus on the U.S. market, on marketing activities for the U.S. market, to increase our presence in this market, as well as improving the quality of the device and improving the ability, the capabilities of production. But Omic is also seeking for partnerships, for example, with key players or manufacturers that they produce the standard kits in order to combine both technologies and provide what we call the premium kit that we provide a, a better a solution uh, for the doctors and also partnering with the uh, hospitals uh, or net of hospitals in order to uh, increase the clinical evidence uh, that we want to uh, present the doctors. What an exciting technology that can help mitigate complications in, in the application of, of needles and in different medical procedures and relieve pain for a lot of people around the world. And another great example of Tikkun Olam uh, now that you've heard the story of Omic Medical, make sure to go to their website. We have all the contact details here in this video and also on our social network platforms. Uh, thank you for tracking with us. We believe in doing well by doing good. All the best.